Hi, and welcome to Category Management Knowledge Group's weekly Category Management Tip. If you're not familiar with Category Management Knowledge Group, we provide category management training solutions that are driven from a foundation of accredited e-learning courses. I'm Sue Nichols, the President and Owner of Category Management Knowledge Group. I love everything about category management, so every week I share some of my learnings on category management related topics. We're kind of changing things up this week, and I'm going to teach you today how to create a bubble chart in Excel. Creating this type of chart isn't very intuitive, but it's a great way to graph three different data variables into one graph. So I'm going to launch right into Excel now, and we're going to get started on creating the chart. So we're going to create a simple bubble chart that includes three data variables, index versus ACV share, which I taught you about in last week's tip, volume percent change, and dollar sales. Of note, the last column that you have in your data represents the size of the bubble that you're going to be creating in your graph. So the first thing we're going to do is highlight cells B3 to D6, and this is where our data is. Of note, you don't highlight the column headers or the row headers, only the data. Then we do an insert, other charts, and we go down and we find the bubble chart. I'm going to select the one with a 3D effect. So now you can see the framework of the bubble chart. The first thing I'm going to do is get rid of the legend that you see here, the series one. Now we're going to go in and add in data labels from layout, data labels, and we're going to put them over on the left. So what we need to do now is that these labels currently are the percent change versus year ago numbers for each of the bubbles. But that's not what we want. We actually want it to be the banner name. So we have to manually go through. This is kind of part of the drag of uh, creating the bubble charts. And we can see that 6% is actually banner number 2 over in the table. So we're just going to type in banner number 2. And you can actually drag the labels over if they start going into the bubbles at all. So you can move them actually anywhere that you want in here. So you're not stuck with where they end up when you create your chart. So I'm just going to go through and manually fix all of these. So now I've got all of my labels properly set up so they describe each of the banners that each ball represents. You can also click on each ball. This is something else that people don't know you can do. And I can actually go in and change the colors of the balls. So if I want them to be different colors for each banner, I can go in and do that. I could even actually um, add in their logo as well if I was trying to make it look really fancy. So you can do all those kinds of things as well. You don't have to conform to what Excel or PowerPoint give you as your options. Now I need to fix my axes. So I'm going to click on the horizontal axis in the middle of the graph. And before you click, you have to make sure right now I'm clicked on the outside and you can tell by the edging that shows with the round circles here. I need to be clicked on the horizontal area. So you kind of have to move your cursor around until it says horizontal value axis, then you click. And now I'm clicked on that middle area. So then I'm going to right click, format axis, and then I have a whole bunch of different options. I'm going to go into Axis Labels and select Low. And if you watch on the back of my screen, I'll move this over so you can see. If I select Low, you can now see that it's moved to the bottom of the graph. The horizontal axis should be set to 100 as the axis value. And what that's going to do is that this is the index versus ACV. I want the axis, the midpoint, to be at 100 so I know the most and least developed relative to their ACV. And I'm also going to go into line color and I'm going to change the color of my midpoint in my graph and you'll see why in a minute. So I'm going to go into line color, solid line, and I'm going to change it to a very apparent color. So why don't we make it red? So now you can see that the horizontal line, the horizontal axis value is red. And I can even go in to line style and make it thicker so I can see that midpoint more easily. Now I want to do the same kind of thing with the vertical axis. So I'm going to hover over in the middle part until I find my vertical axis. Once again, I want to make sure I'm not on the plot area, but on the vertical axis. Then I click, I right click, format axis, and this time the axis labels are going to be high. And that's going to move my axis over to the right hand side. Once again, I'll go in to select my line color, 
which is set at zero for this axis, which is where it should be because it's percent change versus year ago. Now I've got my line selected to red, and then I can go into style and increase it to the same width I did on the other side, which was 2.75. And then I can hit close. Now the only other thing that's an issue here is that when it's creating a bubble chart, it doesn't know the mins and maxes. So as an example, you can see that all the balls are kind of clustered together on the horizontal axis, and that's because my axis is starting at zero. I can change my horizontal axis to a 75, and I can also change my maximum. I'm going to change it to a 125 instead of a 135, just so things are nicely spread out on the graph. And this is a really important thing to understand when you're creating the bubble charts, because otherwise you end up with all of the bubbles too close together, and they can be really crunched together, and it's difficult to look at the information. So I've now completed a bubble graph. This is how basic you can create a bubble graph. You want to be able to control the midpoints for the horizontal as well as the vertical axes and make sure that you distinguish those. You can kind of show where the, the midpoints are that you want to express. So as an example with the index versus ACV, we made it 100. And with the percent change versus year ago, we made it 0%. So that anything that's growing is above the red line and anything that's not growing or is declining is below the red line. Same with the index versus ACV. The highest developed banners are on the right-hand side of the red line, and the least developed banners are on the left-hand side. We're now going to go back into PowerPoint, and I'm going to show you some examples of some pretty cool bubble charts. I can look at how a retailer is doing at a regional level based on the percent change versus year ago on the horizontal axis, the index versus all channel share on the vertical axis, and dollar sales is the size of the bubble. So from here, I can add in their grocery regional competition. So from here, I can add in their grocery regional competition, their remaining channel competition, and of course, their results. Now I can see how retailer X, who is depicted in gold, is doing versus the grocery channel, which is in gray, and the remaining channels, which is in green, across the key three regions. Now I can see how Region 1 for the retailer is doing versus grocery competition. And I can see that grocery competition in the gray ball is much more developed than Retailer X. Retailer X is also the furthest to the left, indicating that they're behind competition in terms of percent change versus year ago. Even though the category is down for everyone, they're losing market share because everything is to the left of the axis, but Retailer X is the furthest to the left. Region 2 is where Retailer X is more developed than their competition based on ACV. You can see that they're above that midline point on the vertical axis. But they're losing share in Region 2 because their competition is at a much higher percent change versus year ago than they are because the retailer is on the left of the axis, which no retailer likes to see. And Region 3 is where Retailer X is below both competitors, indicating a poor index versus ACV or development in this category relative to competition. Also, grocery competition in the gray bubble is outpacing Retailer X's growth because it's further to the right on the horizontal axis. There's a lot of great information that be can be gleaned from a bubble chart, and different measures will tell different stories. I've now been able to identify my biggest overall regional opportunities for Retailer X as part of my market assessment. I can then drill down into the different banners by region to understand which banners might be driving the overall results for Retailer X. In net, bubble charts can be used to tell stories and gain insights into your business in an effective visual way. They're great when you're doing live presentations because you can even add in animation within the PowerPoint graph so as you tell the story, the graph builds. If you're interested in learning more about how to maximize the use of Excel and PowerPoint that ties in with bubble charts, we have two courses available in our eLearning Center for you to review. PowerPoint and Presentation Skills walks you through how to properly use PowerPoint and create presentations with great flow. Building Excel Skills gives you instructions on how to do many different functions and formula in Excel using category management data and examples for all of the exercises. That's it for this week's tip. Next week's session is going to focus on some analytics that relate to efficient assortment. If you haven't already done so and you're enjoying my tips, you can subscribe to my blog. If you're interested in category management training, please visit our website 
We have some topics that will help you to fill in some of the gaps if you didn't understand all of the examples I showed you today or if you're just looking for a great training program or industry certification. And finally, we're very active in LinkedIn, Facebook and Twitter, so please connect with us. I hope you've enjoyed today's session. Have a great day.